Hi everyone, welcome back to another video on Terraform. In this video, we'll take a look at a new concept, which I imagine is, is probably familiar to most people watching this, which would be the idea of a variable. And variables in Terraform will operate very similarly to how you would in pretty much any programming language. It, it allows you to make your code more dynamic and easier to manage um, in the long term. So let's, let's hop right into it. There's three different types. We have input variables, output values, and local values. In this video, we'll focus on inputs and local. Output is essentially like many other programming languages where it's kind of like a return statement where you're either going to return something to the command line to see or to use it to pass into maybe another variable or some other uh, resource that you want to use. So how would we use this? Let's, let's go over use case. As a reminder, we are using the Snowflake provider. And so far we've built a database here. We've created a role and assigned my username to the role. Let's say we want to add a schema to this database, but we'll do it by using a variable. So I'll make a new section here, call it schemas. It will be very similar to how we built, we've built these other ones so far. So we'll start off with resource. The name, the type of the resource is Snowflake Schema, so we'll put that here. And then we need to give it some sort of alias name to represent this particular resource that we're building, and we'll call this demo schema. We'll first start with uh, name. We won't put anything in here yet because we're going to use a variable for that. But the database that we want to use, because we know this is the this is the value that's required. In our case, we want it to go to my first DB. So we could just write in the name of the database here and just say my first DB, but we want to do this the same way that we did for the Snowflake role where we, we made it a little bit more dynamic and aligned with the resources that we've already built. So in this case, we'll do, we, to get this value here, we'll say, take the name of the, the type of the resource, the alias of that resource, which is this, and then the attribute, which is name. And this will match this value. That's what it will pull. So now name, we want to use a variable. That's the whole point of this video. Let's start first with an input variable. Let's say right here we want to declare our variables. To do that, we create a variable block, and it's as simple as this. Let's copy this in here, variable, the name of the variable. So in this case, we'll call it schema name. You know, you can name this whatever you want. The type, in this case, will be a string. There's var various different types that you can use. And they'll, you, know, you can see this here, string number, boolean. You can set them as a list, map, set, etc. We just leave it like this. This is just kind of a, essentially a placeholder for a variable. But what we want to do is give it a value. We want to hard code this value. So we add the default attribute here. Whatever we put here is what will actually be used. So let's say we want to call the schema demo schema. So now anytime we use this variable, we call it, it's, we're indicating that it's a string. And the default value is demo schema, meaning unless we explicitly overwrite this, which in this case we're not going to, this is what will be used. Now how would we refer to that here? Very simply, the shortcut is var dot and then the name of the variable, schema name, and that's it. And because we've given it a default value, there's nothing we need to do here. It'll just say, when it gets to this point, it's going to look for a variable with this name, with this alias name, and return the default value if it's there. So in this case, it will return demo schema. Let's get this going. Let's do Terraform init first, just to make sure we're all, we're still good to go. Looks good. Terraform plan. We can see this schema is going to be added to this database. Now we'll do a Terraform apply. Yes. Okay, now let's see if this worked. So this worked, we were able to create a schema on this database and uh, do that by using a variable. Let's use a different type of variable. Let's use that local variable. How would we use that? So the difference here is locals are basically putting them together in a single block as opposed to breaking them out into individual variable resources. Just be something like this. 
So what we'll do here is we'll, we'll create another schema, but we'll use the locals version of a variable instead of using it as a variable block. So let's call this, let's give a name of the local variable, another schema. So this is the equivalent of this, I'd say, if you want to think about it that way. This is grouping them together in a block, whereas this is breaking them out as individual concepts. And we'll just show you how to use either of them and uh, they can accomplish the same thing. It just depends on how you want to use it. We'll call this local schema. The way we'll refer to it is this value here, but the actual value that's going to be returned is this. Kind of like we refer to this as schema name, but what came through is demo schema. And we'll make a new resource here. I'll just copy this. Same concept, same database. Uh, we'll have to give this a new name. We'll call this local schema. And instead of doing var.local schema, we can see here the way that this is referred to is like this local dot name of the value. Local dot another schema. And that should accomplish the same thing. So let's do a plan, see what comes through. We can see the change is local schema. It's picking up that value, which means that this correctly captured that variable name. And let's do a Terraform apply. Yes. And now if we go back again, we should refresh and see our second one. So now we have two. Now you can see as we start to build this out, how easy it is to add schemas and then all these different resources here, all through code. And you can source control this so you can see exactly when certain things were added. So in my opinion, it's a great tool. Uh, and this is, we're just scratching the surface here, but I think variables, as you grow this out, it starts to really showcase some of the power of of how this can work. That'll do it for this video. Thanks for watching. As always, feel free to subscribe, comment, like, whatever, uh, if you found this helpful, and I'll see you at the next video. Thanks.